Today I'm going to share a little bit of information with you guys about the anaerobic digestion of dairy manure with milk. Okay? Uh, first, I, I'd like to acknowledge my co-authors, and these are my for, former uh, graduate students. And the reason we are interested in this topic is because we, uh, we visited some of the dairy farms, especially milking houses. We see a lot of uh, waste milk from the uh, milking system. When they uh, the, uh, waste the milk flushed out, uh, they all end up in uh, first on the floor and they end up in the manure. Uh, when you uh, install or you operate an energy digester on farm, uh, normally they, the manure goes to the digester uh, with all this wasted milk. So uh, the question is, we talked to the farmers, the question is uh, whether this wasted milk will affect the digester performance in terms of biogas production, methane content, and so on and so forth. And then we say, oh, okay, let's take a look at, look at it. Uh, we uh, write a proposal and uh, got funded from the uh, Minnesota legislature uh, take a look at the uh, impact of uh, waste milk on uh, biogas production. So um, I guess uh, for those uh, of you who are familiar with the milking operation, it's pretty common you know, uh, in, in other milking power systems. Um, uh, uh, cows are milking? Yes? Oh, okay, you want to raise the voice? Because this is not a mic, okay? This is just for the recording. So uh, I, I will talk a little bit louder. Uh, when the milk, uh, or the, the cows are milked, uh, some of the waste milk comes to the floor and then go through the drains, and that, that way, you know, milk end up with the manure. Right? Basically, that's the uh, operating procedure. Uh, milk, as we know, has high, very high COD content. Uh, normally, this is a, a number from uh, uh, from literature, uh, actually from our uh, ana analysis of uh, milk as well. It's uh, about 190,000 milligrams per liter. That's the COD content. Um, digesters are commonly used type of current dairy farms. As uh, there are, I guess, I believe there are three to five digesters in Minnesota on dairy farms. Uh, the one uh, that's very close to our place is, uh, is located in St. Peter. Uh, so uh, we went there, we look at, and it's a, pro, uh, uh, it's a plug flow digester. We, we, uh, we actually observed all these operations to see the milk, uh, milking system, and then waste the milk uh, goes to uh, the manure, and then go all the way to the digester. Um, so the, here is the, the question we, we want to look at uh, the uh, impact of milk on the digester. Uh, so we set up an uh, experiment with all the batch digester in the lab. This is a lab study. Um, we add uh, milk at the different levels from 1% up to all the way up to like 19% to add to the uh, cow manure and to see what's, uh, what's going on, what, what will happen in terms of uh, affecting the uh, digester performance. As I said earlier, we look at the total biogas volume produced and methane content and other chemical variables analysis. So these are the things we look at uh, to see how that, um, you know, how the milk is going to uh, influence the digester performance or the digestion process. Actually, this is just a batch digester in the lab. It's, uh, it's different than really the digester operating on the farm. Okay. <clears throat> the manure was collected actually from um, a dairy farm equipped with a scraped manure handling system, uh, which is pretty common. And then the raw milk we collected from uh, another farm, the milking parlor, uh, which is also close to our place, Wasika, Minnesota. Uh, we we, we uh, went to the farm and collected fresh milk. Uh, the other way we can use, uh, we can also use like a whole milk purchase the farm uh, super uh, farm grocery stores, but later on we found out, you know, we, we would like to use the raw milk uh, from dairy farm directly, because that's the real situation. Because <coughs> uh, this is an experiment, so we always have a control, you know, uh, without milk addition to look at the difference. Otherwise, we, it's hard for us to tell if there's any difference 
uh, between uh, uh, milk contaminated and um, uh, uh, or uh, the manure without milk. <coughs> Uh, analysis wise we use GC. Now here is the first graph I like to share with you. Uh, we collect the samples because this is a batch test so it lasts as long as there's a gas produced. So th uh, these four lines as you can see the first time we collect uh, gas samples after one day digestion and then, then seven days, 16 days, 29 days as you can see, um, the first day actually, the higher the milk content, it's a straight line, which means uh, milk uh, is, is a, a proportional to the gas, biogas, community biogas production. Uh, the second line, after one week, you collect gas samples and run analysis, you see there's uh, when the, uh, the higher milk content, like 19%, seven, uh, 14%, Actually, the uh, um, the gas cumulative biogas volume actually doesn't really has a linear relationship with the milk content. Uh, same thing for the uh, 16, 16 day analysis. The interesting thing is the 29 day analysis, which still shows a very uh, clear linear relationship between milk content and uh, the uh, cumulative biogas, which means you know. Uh, uh, the explanation for this, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's our, uh, our guess, is that, um, you know, in the first few days, the bacteria probably may, uh, may not be adapted to the high milk environment. So during the process, actually, they get themselves uh, accustomed to the new environment. So uh, uh, the milk actually produces a huge ammunition for them to really uh, uh, grow or develop in the later stage of the digestion process. That's why uh, on uh, tw day 29, you see a straight line there. Okay, that's for the accumulated biogas volume. If you look at the uh, biogas production, uh, all the, um, uh, the volume, cumulative total biogas volume, you add them all together, actually, it's a straight line from uh, uh, control all the way up to 19%. Okay, so in other words, milk will really increase the biogas volume produced okay, from the digester. So that's one thing we observed. <coughs> now, if we look at the, at the very beginning, it's about like a, a five days, the first five days, uh, you see uh, uh, the higher the milk content, actually, uh, there's a huge very steep increase in terms of uh, uh, biogas volume produced. So at the very beginning, actually, the high milk content is conducive to biogas production. And then uh, as the days go on, it, it kind of levels a little bit. For those lower, uh, lower milk content digesters, um, they start as a straight line, gradually increase as the milk content increase. Okay? So this is a, a, a small section of the of a large graph here. So this actually the, the inset is just this part. I, I want to enlarge that part just show the difference. Um, the stability wise, you know, as we we know, you have more milk in the liquid. So the stability wise actually is affected by high milk content. It goes like this and then level off and then keeps going. So it has uh, some fluctuations. Right then, it's, it's a straight line, you know, as time goes on. Okay. Um, so this is about uh, uh, cumulative. So if you look at the uh, if you look at the production rate, which is uh, the the slope. Okay. So you can see that a high milk content has a high uh, production rate at the very beginning. Okay. This is uh, the production rate. Where if you if we Put them together. Uh, I take the data out and then um, take the slope. You know, calculate the production rate. You can see the production rate actually at the very beginning, as the milk content increased, it, it's a straight line and then levels off a little bit. Which means you know um, uh, that the rate actually gradually reduced 
as the milk content increased. Now, here is the interesting thing here. Uh, methane content in the biogas affected by milk addition. Now, we have this. This is a, a biogas production rate, and this is a methane actual production rate. Seems like this difference, this um, difference increases as the milk content increases. Okay. So in other words, this is a, a, the methane content. Okay. So at the very, uh, at the lower um, milk content, it's pretty much like a, a, a horizontal line. And then after you pass like 3%, it keeps going up. Now, that tells us something. You know, you still have, you have a pretty good biogas prod production rate. However, your methane production rate just doesn't match up with the biogas production rate. In other words, we are producing what? Producing CO2 rather than methane. Because the methane cannot, you know, just go as fast as uh, the total biogas volume production. So that's that's the point we find. And it's a very interesting point we find from this study. Um, in other words, you know, it will produce uh, it, it will produce uh, a biogas that contains less methane rather than more methane as the milk content increase. So the the point here is that we said three percent probably is the best. That's the uh, uh, is the most amount, the maximum amount of uh, milk that can be added to the manure. Um, this is also the point that we like to rec we recommend to dairy farmers. Hey, say you guys have a lot of milk wasted, and make sure you don't add too much milk to the uh, manure before the manure goes to the digester. Uh, Three percent probably is the maximum number you can go with. Now, if you look at the production rate. This picture gives you a very clear idea how that goes. See, this is a biogas, and this is methane. So after this, some point here, okay, this is a three, this is a five, and then actually methane production rate stays the same. But biogas production rate keeps increase as a linear relationship goes all the way up. Uh, the difference is a CO2, which means the, bio, the, uh, the, the biogas actually is, is diluted by CO2, and you end up with poor quality of uh, biogas or the methane. So you, in, this, um, in this way, you are not going to generate good quality biogas, and then you end up with CO2 produced. Okay, okay now let's look at the um, other chemical variables we measured in the experiment. Uh, look at the COD as the as the uh, um, milk content increases. COD of course increases because milk has a very high COD content, 190,000. Um, but the final COD actually pretty much the same for all the digesters, which means you know you increase the manure content. But um, it doesn't really affect the digest digestion efficiency. It still consume all the milk added, but we produce a lot of uh, CO2. So that makes sense, you know, because uh, you convert COD into CO2, and that's why your reduction rate is pretty much the same. Okay, but that part is not used beneficially for uh, methane production. It's used for COD pro uh, CO2 production. Okay. So total nitrogen-wise, there's no difference. As we all know, that anaerobic digestion doesn't really have a true impact on, on ammonia. And the serum ratio-wise, final serum ratio is by 2.4. And the initial serum ratio, um, because of the addition of the uh, COD, so you see pretty high serum ratio uh, for the high uh, milk content. So that's. Uh, um, um, these are the information we obtained from this study, uh, which means the bottom line is that you know you, you don't want to add too much milk in the uh, in the manure 
if the manure will be used for anaerobic digestion. So conclusions wise, the following conclusions uh, can be reached. First, added milk will increase biogas volumetric production rate as we observed. You know, uh, it really doesn't increase methane production rate. Okay. Um, the content of methane is reduced if you, your milk level is high, which means you know um, more CO2 is produced. And I shared this information with uh, some other people uh, early, and uh, uh, some 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 of the dairy um, uh, dairy people or are, are, uh, expert in dairy production, whatever, and they told me. Yes, the CO2 is produced by this CO2. Because CO2 is a greenhouse gas, right? So we all know that. And I said, if you put too much milk in the digestion, you will produce a lot of CO, uh, a lot of greenhouse gas. But they say, well, uh, wait a minute. You know, uh, CO2, yes, is a greenhouse gas. But because this, uh, uh, this CO2 is from feed, but it is not from from nowhere. It's, it's, a, it's a newly created CO2. It's a CO2 already there. It just gets released. So if you look at the whole picture of the CO2's uh, carbon cycle, uh, this CO2 is part of already existed in the feed, in the manure, uh, in the milk. It's not created. So from that perspect perspective, uh, it doesn't increase greenhouse gas. Production. Uh, I, 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 I I tend to agree. You know, probably that's right. But uh, the the impact on biogas quality is tr is real. You know, it doesn't matter where the CO two is from, but you you do dilute the biogas, uh, the methane content in the biogas. So um, added milk will increase CO two removal efficiency. Um, of course, uh, it, it changes the carbon nitrogen ratio. Okay. Okay, I guess that's pretty much about my presentation. I'll welcome questions if you have. Thank you. This was with raw milk. Uh, raw milk. Whey might uh, be somewhat the same. Would you expect waste waste whey and digesters? Uh, I still I didn't get your question. This is from raw milk. Yeah. Can you jump to the same conclusion so with whey? Oh, whey. Okay, cheese whey? Yeah. Um, well, that's a good question. I, yeah, whey, basically, we need to look at, whey contains a lot of fat, but the milk contains a lot of, uh, very high level of volatile fatty acids, butyric acidic acid. So that's the reason, you know, you, you see a lot of uh, uh, carbon converted to uh, CO2. So who is the, the fat, uh, high fat content may affect the digestion, digestive performance because of it's, it's, it's more difficult to uh, decompose, to break, to break down. It's not like a VFA, it's easy, available, readily available, right? 